Good afternoon. Phil Lindemann with your news from Bale Summit Orthopedics and Neurosurgery on Crystal 93. Tunnel numbers are skewed this weekend by a late night glitch in the system. Traffic counters were not working for two hours Friday night and one hour Saturday. Including the glitch, just under 133,000 vehicles traveled the I-70 Mountain Corridor in three days. That's about 1,000 fewer cars than last weekend, just about equal to the difference from that glitch. But 8,000 fewer cars than the same weekend last year. The slightly delayed onset of fall foliage could be to blame for a slower I-70 weekend. Colors are about a week late this year, but experts at the CSU Extension Office say nothing to worry about. This happens every few years, led by one big thing, the abnormally wet summer. Dry weather increases sugar concentration in the sap, and so the brightest autumn colors are produced when we have really dry, sunny days, followed by cool, dry nights. Fall colors are popping now, but the season could be cut short if weather gets too wet, cold, or windy. Summit County shooting range is closed starting today for two to three months of sound mitigation. Aaron Byrne with the county. We were getting calls and complaints from our neighboring communities, so we took action. We want to, you know, we want to be good neighbors up here. Crews are putting up fencing made of special dampening material currently used at oil drilling sites on the plains. We understand this is not the ideal time. We have a really small construction window, so we're just asking all of our hunters and range users to just have a little patience right now. Byrne says fencing is the cheaper of two options for mitigation, saving the county about $1 million. That work is paid for in part by a state grant and supported by a pair of recent studies. They compete for dollars, ski days, and even influence. But the world's biggest ski companies are setting all that aside to save the sport. Mountain Collaborative for Climate Action, which that's our effort to work together with Powder, with Boyne, with Altera Resorts. And we've created the ski industry's first unified effort to combat climate change. That was Sarah Lococo at Breckenridge. Hundreds of industry movers and shakers are in Breck this week for the Mountain Towns 2030 conference. The 2030 mark has three pillars for us. So it's about our, our energy use and our emissions. It's about zero waste and it's about zero net impact to forests and habitat. Stay tuned in coming days for more, like what is being done by local towns and how copper is becoming a carbon sink. Tragedy struck the Vale snowboarding scene last week when longtime local and influential pro Adam Merriman died on his e-skateboard. Authorities say Merriman hit a dip in the pavement and was thrown from his board. He later died of a suspected head injury. Writes fellow pro Barrett Christie in Slush Mag, his passing leaves so many of us gutted. Adam was a big reason I was drawn to snowboarding, why I moved to Vale, why I completely bought the hype. A tribute to Merriman is held in two weeks, October 1st, at the Colorado Ski and Snowboard Museum in Vail Village. That backing track is from one of Merriman's films, Sexual Chocolate, from Kingpin Productions in 1994. Local fire danger remains moderate today, with no fire restrictions here in Summit. In sports, the Rockies open a series with the Giants today at 640. And in local sports, brought to you by Red Mountain Autos at their new location on Airport Road. The Summit High Golf Team was at regionals today at Eagle Ranch Golf Club. Tomorrow is day two. Summit Girls Rugby won the home sevens tournament over the weekend, defeating Monarch in the championship match 45-5, led by senior Jocelyn Roak with 20 points. Phil Lindemann with your news from Vail Summit Orthopedics and Neurosurgery on Crystal 93.